Hi everyone, so in, I'm Fania Kuller, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to go from a variant ID to a SNP ID, so a single nucleotide polymorphism ID. So let's get started. Um, so here, for instance, like let's say that you have um, genetic information um, in the form, like for Alzheimer's disease, for instance, let's say I'm using, um, this is Janssen et al. Um, 2019 SNPs, as in P's. There are a lot of them, but just for example, let's just see that we have this unique ID, allele one, allele two. So these are some IDs, the chromosome number, um, the location, and then the differences between allele one and allele two is a T and a C. The you know, C, T and a C chromosome and a base pair. You can take it as chromosome, which is this base pair, which is what this is, the allele 1 T and then allele 2, which is a C, and you can sort of see this information here, and it has SNP information. But what if I didn't have this? What if I just had this column of information? How would I find out the corresponding SNPs, SNP, single nucleotide polymorphism, RSID? So these are usually IDs that are given for SNPs that are pretty helpful, these RSIDs. So how would we do that? And this may, guys, we depend on your SNP file that you have. So what I would do is I would do the following um, thing here right now. What I would so what I would do here is I would break this apart um, into the different parts, and I would say, okay, well, let me just um, you know delimit it, and let me just break this apart here. Um, you know, just sort of separate the information now, and then. Um, I think what's really important here is let me just delete this part here and um, let me just get this part here. Let me delimit this uh, data, text, to columns. Um, so I'm just trying to set it up for you guys to see how you would do it if you were given the same situation as me, um, which is something I've encountered a few times. So you can just um, have this set up like where you can concatenate CHR chromosome, um, wait, this chromosome number this number here, chromosome this one. And then what you can do is they, um, this is just going to concatenate this information. So chromosome one, and this is the base pair information. So you have this information here, and I'm just going to do this here. Now I found on this really cool website that helps you do these conversions. But the only thing is that what you have to do is um, you have to use, so this is a site, as well. So that's called Caviar Genomic Variant Database. So what it's able to do is query 100,000 of these positions for you, um, 100,000 variant IDs at once. So it's db.systemsbiology.net slash caviar. So you can click here. So known variants is a compilation of single nucleotide um, variants, like single nucleotide polymorphisms, indels, indecisions, deletions, and complex variants observed in humans. So this is a great um, site I've used. So what you can do is you can just query it. And then what you can do is see what build you want to use. And, um, you know, so if I put too many here, like let's say that I used all of these, which is about like, you know, hunt, like over a million. So there's so many. What it's gonna do is it's going to complain to me that, hey, you can't, um, and right now in Excel, there are like around at least 13,000 of these. So it's gonna complain that, hey, you can't put this in. So let's see, like, let's say that maybe I, uh, let me just try selecting maybe like 400K or something. So then I can just do this and now I can see the build. If I try to submit like 400,000, what it's gonna do is it's going to complain. Query size is limited to 100,000. So I can only look at 100,000 variants at once. So that's just a disadvantage right there. So what else I can do is I can just, like, let's say I just wanna look at the first, um, so under 100,000. So that just also shows you what, you know, what, what I was meaning. So let me just try to look at maybe the first, um, you know, 300 and, uh, or maybe the first 400. Let's take the first, you know, 400 or so of these variants. And let me put this instead. Let's go back here. Let 
And instead of these, let me just wipe all these out and paste this here. So you're gonna see, okay, well, maybe this one wasn't found here. So let's go back and let's try this out here, what the HG19 is. And the output format, so you can see here that you can have your chromosome information here and you can have your positions here. So that's why I have chromosome number and then the positions listed here. And or I can also have text easier to parse by script. So let's try this out. So let's try HG19 instead. So what you can see is for instance, for this file here, in some locations it has the SNP ID. So you can probably um, download this. You can save this directly as a text file as well. You can save this as a text file, um, as a .txt file. Um, you know, I could save a .txt and then I can just replace it if I need to. So what we can see here is that this chromosome, this, this thing right here, has given this SNP information here. Now, if we go check this out over here, what we're gonna observe is that um, the same location CHR1, the same uh, that we'd given in CHR1, this base position 715265, uh, and you can see the C and the T here, you can see that we have the same SNP ID that is picked up here. So, and what remember guys, what we gave again is just this, this file of information here where we have the chromosome and the base pair, um, especially in my work, we're looking at single nucleotide variants. So that's the information that we gave in and we're able to extract the RSIDs. And, um, you know, when you put these into, um, into Excel, when you take that notepad and put it into Excel, you might find that, hey, you have some RSIDs here, and then you could just probably filter on these um, or use other uh, data manipulation um, tactics as well. So I hope that that was helpful for you guys as well. So again, remember that if you use this caveat known variants, you're able to select on the build. You just need your chromosome and your base pairs. And then it automatically is going to, and for longer ones, it may take a while to render, but you're able to then extract the same information. Another example is like, let's say, like, let's look at this. Uh, maybe let's look at another example where we can see this one, CHR1723891, and it has this RSID. So let's also look here where we are going to look at seven, um, 723891. And then we're going to see this example here. You know, you can see the G and the C as well, and that's a G and a C. RS2977670. So RS2977670. So it is the same. So that is awesome, guys. So again, this is just in situations where maybe you just have this information and you're trying to figure out like what, if you're just given this information and you're trying to figure out what are the RSIDs, how do I go from one to the other? Like if I have this in some format or the other, like if I have this information, how do I um, figure out like, you know, from this, how do I figure out what these are? And that's, that can be really helpful. Again, it's a hundred thousand at a time. So maybe you want a variance at a time. So maybe you want to apply some other filtering techniques in the process, but that's something I found out about. And, um, you know, you can try this out where that's, this is that format. You could also have a table format too, which looks like this. Um, if you're able to parse through this, um, you know, it's easier on human eyes, a text, you can have it as a JSON format here. If you want to extract it like this, you could probably write a script to take this JSON file, extract the information and put it in a Python. You could write a Python file just going through this as well, reading this JSON file, you know, JavaScript object notation file and putting it into the table as well. Um, you can write a script to do that uh, as well. Um, and I can help you guys with that in another video. You can also have a VCF variant call format as well, where uh, maybe you just want to um, read this here. You can probably download this file and um, you know, have these mappings here, and the allele frequency and allele counts and other things. So um, you know you can have some that have mapped to RSID, some that may not have. So you can probably use this, maybe save this as well. If this is easier for you, maybe you want to save this. 
as a as a dot txt. And then maybe let's see if we open this up here. Um, I don't think that quite works out, but you can see whatever, maybe yeah, you can probably use this directly and then you can load this into Excel. Um, and then um, if you load this into Excel as well, you can directly probably see what this comes out to and um, you know, delete these here. Um, probably use some data and text to columns and use some delimiter. Um, as well. Um, you can use this, couldn't read anything here. So you can um, clean it up using code, using Excel, um, and a member can do a hundred thousand at a time. But that, but maybe you just want to do it for a few or something, or you can always find some workarounds around there. So again, um, this all this is is just sort of mapping from one format of information presentation to another format. Uh, this is something I thought was really helpful along in my research process that I thought maybe you guys would, might want to know as well. Um, I discovered that uh, it was a very helpful site to use and I really hope that you guys find this helpful. So all the best and please let me know if you have any questions at all. Right, take care.